Hello everyone. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how easy it is to put together a quick visualisation of one of the data sets from the BathHack data store. To do that, we're going to use a great tool called CartoDB to build a map. Don't worry, we won't be writing any code. So let's use a real data set from the data store as an example. You can find all of the relevant links in the blog post which accompanies this screencast. The data set we're going to use contains a record of all of the local traffic accidents recorded between 1996 and 2013. As you can imagine, there's quite a lot of data here and we'd like to see if the data tells us any kind of story rather than just being numbers. The important thing we need to know is that each entry has a location and as a bonus that it has a date. That means not only can we plot our data on a map, but we can also animate it. So let's begin by logging into CartoDB. Um, we just go to the sign up page here, um, it's usual fare. Um, you can either log in with Google or the, do the usual username and password route. I'm going to log in with my Google account. So once we're in, we are going to create a new data set. And the way to do that is to go to your data sets and click on new data set up here in the right side and we need a URL for the data set that we're going to import and that's we get from our data set in the data store so if we go to about no sorry not about export on the data set up here at the right and we go to the download section here and if you right click on CSV and say copy link address and then we flip back to CartoDB, paste the address in there, click Submit, and then we say Connect Data Set down at the bottom right here. And off it goes and does its thing. So now it's uploaded our data, it's presented it in this kind of spreadsheet format. And there's not a lot we need to do here, really. What we need to do is just check that it's picked up the geometry of our data set, so the, where the different points are located. So it appears to have done that here. So it's got the latitudes and longitudes here. Um, and if that doesn't happen, what you can do is you can go to GeoReference and choose the columns that you want from your data set to represent latitude and longitude. There are other ways of working out where points are, but um, you know we'll usually have longitude and latitude, and that's really kind of helpful. Now, the second thing we need to do is because we're going to use dates, we need to tell Carto DB that our date field is actually a date, so it kind of has a bit more of an understanding about what the date is. So we just go to this drop down here below the date, and we change the data type to date and we say yes do it okay so now it's done that that's all the data stuff we've got to do that's it no more tables no more numbers what we're going to do next is we're going switch to switch over to map view right so now I'll switch to map view with this button up at the top here and we can immediately see um, where the towns in the area are. So we've got Canesham, Edsuma Norton and Radstock, and the city of Bath. Each one of these dots represents an accident across the whole time period of our data set. So what I'm going to do is zoom into Bath using the plus and minus buttons at the top left here and by dragging the map with the mouse. So now that we're zoomed in we can start to see that the points are clustered along some of the major routes in and out of the city which we'd kind of expect um, but it's interesting to see that that is actually the case. Um, so we've got quite a simple visualization here, just some dots, um, but we're already gleaning some idea of what's going on. 
So what we want to do is start to customize this visualization and maybe look at some others. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the wizards which are in this little button on the right hand side and they are wizards indeed because they allow us to switch between the visualizations and change different parameters to customize the way they look and help us tell our story with the data. So with this visualization there's not a great deal we can do. We can change the color and we can change how the dots overlay. If you're familiar with Photoshop these are very similar to the way that Photoshop um, layer operations work. So that's the this basic simple visualization but you know already we can make fairly pretty things with that. Okay so let's move on to the cluster visualization. So this gives us a little bit more insight than just the points alone because it's showing us where we're starting to get pockets of accidents occurring together um, and as you might expect they seem to be pretty much round the city centre where obviously everybody's going to be driving to and again we can change various aspects uh, about how the, the markers look and change the number of buckets which controls just how finely tuned the clustering is um, so we can just play around with those just to get a slightly different perspective on how the clustering is going on so now we're going to switch to the chloropleth visualization. It's a bit of an awkward word, but essentially what it means is coloring points according to some value. So what we've got by default here is we, we it would normally choose this one here, but we want to we don't want to visualize the the road number because that's kind of meaningless. So um, let's have a look for something that means something. Okay, so let's have a look at maybe the speed limit that was in force where the accident took place. So yellow is the lower speed and blue is a higher speed. So we can see that um, the higher speed accidents are out of the city centre where we'd expect to see higher speed roads. Um, and we can switch this colour ramp here so that we make the lower speed blue and the and the higher speed a lighter color so we can play around with this to just have a look at whether there's any kind of correlation between speed and accidents or um, we can also look at the number of casualties that are occurring in an accident um, so, I mean, that's interesting here already. I can't see where it's on the map, but we were already seeing that there was an accident involving 21 people, which is rather surprising. Right, so we'll move on to the next visualization, which is category. Um, so by default, it's again defaulted to the road number, but again, that's not much use to us. So what we're gonna do is categorize them by what have we got here we've got um, accident severity so we'll split this down into categories of fatal serious and slight a little bit morbid but um, so to maybe put a little bit more meaning on that we can change the fatal accidents to black and the serious accidents to red and we can begin to see don't seem to be any places where these more serious accidents are more prevalent apart from perhaps this area here but um, you, I might have expected to see more serious accidents clustered in one particular place so 
and that's interesting in itself. So let's switch to the bubble visualization. This is very similar to the cluster visualization and the chloropleth visualization perhaps. So rather than representing values as um, colors, it's representing it by the size of the circles. So again, we need to switch this to something that's um, going to be interesting. So let's say, let's have a look at the number of vehicles that are involved in the accidents. So we can see that again, there's no, there's nothing jumping out here about um, more vehicles being involved apart from maybe here which is at the bottom of a dual carriageway so we might expect if there was an accident cars would shunt into the back of each other and that might be what's going on there okay I'm going to skip over these next few because I want to come back to them um, we'll go to these last two visualization. Intensity pretty much speaks for itself. I think it's f similar to um, the chloropleth, but w what we're visualizing here is that the more accidents there are in that area, the more red that the color becomes. So we can start to see some of the black spots. Um, if we move on to density, this is a similar kind of broader picture of um, of intensity, um, but very kind of vague really for this data set. Although we could perhaps try changing the size of the hexagons to be something a bit smaller, give us a better picture of what's going on. But that again just seems to be following the roads so interesting but not earth shattering now I'm going to go back and revisit the visualization that I skipped over which is called talk what talk does is it gives us some animation some movement some information based on time on the date that Carto B is cleverly chosen for us if it doesn't get the date for you then you can need to just choose it from this drop down here so we can see the date progressing as the animation cycles through and we can pause that and drag backwards and forwards through time um, it's not really telling us a great deal here so let's see if we can change some of the values to tell us a, a different story so let's make it cumulative and so what that's doing is piling the circles on top of each other. Um, so here we need to change the blend mode so that we get a, something that's visible. Um, and it's a bit too coarse for us to see anything. So we could try changing the size of the markers to be something smaller. Um, so that's a bit better. We can start to see where some of the hotspots are around the city but it's still just not quite telling the story um, we could play around with these but I don't think we're getting anywhere with this visualization um, so just take a quick look at talk cat which is the same as talk but um, we can it, the dots are coloured according to um, different categories as we saw before with the category visualisation um, so we could change the what the categories are again to accident, severity um, so we might be able to see um, the accidents as they happen so we can see the red ones are Appearing, but the, they don't seem to be happening at the same groups in time in any way so again that's not really telling us very much 
So I'm going to switch to the last and the most important um, visualization as far as I can see with this data and that's called the heat map. So this is a heat map. Now this is starting to look more interesting because it's rather than plotting individual points it's starting to give an idea of of um, intensity of where things are building up and where where things are hotter effectively um, and this is kind of in line with what we'd seen before the, the main and the ring road around the city um, so you know it's starting to look like other things that we've seen around traffic in the city so this is a little bit coarse again so let's try making the marker a little bit smaller let's try nine um, and we can start to see that there are hot spots around junctions which is what we'd expect to see I guess um, and we need to just have a quick look around to see if there's anything telltale so as we so we can see here there's a lot of accidents going on around this roundabout here um, on the main road coming into the city so we, we can see in a much more localized way where things are actually happening so let's tr make this animated so we can see these hotspots build up over time I think this probably reinforce the point as places get hotter and hotter. Okay, I think again because we've zoomed in a little bit, we might need to just up the marker size. And we might want to make this a bit faster over 10 seconds. And if we change the resolution, I think we might lose this kind of gritty pattern that seems to emerge. If we make that two, that should hopefully give us a more organic looking shape. That's, that's fine, that's what we want. Okay, so we could play around with these just to fine-tune this but I think one thing we could do right now to make this really quite striking is we can change the base map and this is the map that we will take for granted behind our visualization but there's several to choose from here and they are some are more useful than others so this dark colored one is really showing quite clearly where all the hotspots are now and they really stand off off the map so we've now explored all the different visualizations and seen what kind of things it can show us it can tell us a story about where accidents are occurring in Bath and give us some idea about where we could focus our efforts to make things a little bit better in a very visual way rather than just looking at boring old numbers so I've now switched back to the simple view um, so that I can show you something that is called filters um, and what this allows us to do is to drill down into the data and have a look at it in a little bit more detail so we could for instance take a look at um, whether which accidents did police officers attend um, and as we'd expect that's kind of a large number because these figures are 
I guess recorded by the police so it's highly likely that they're going to be in attendance so that's not looking particularly interesting so let's have a look at for instance what day of the week so we can see here that Sundays seem to be less accident prone than the other days of the week so that's kind of interesting but we don't really need to plot that um, let's have a look at the number of vehicles that were involved in an accident. Let's see if we can see if any of these multi-vehicle accidents that are occurring in a particular place. So if we push this up to four or more vehicles, and we can see that these multi-vehicle accidents seem to happen around the end of dual carriageways. So this is a dual carriageway here, and this is a dual carriageway here. So we can perhaps begin to think about whether there's something that could be done to reduce the number of vehicles that are involved in accidents in these particular locations. So my visualization is now complete. Um, I need to share it with people. I want them to see what I've been working on because it's quite interesting. So what you need to do next is click visualize at the top right corner, give it a name. And click create map. This is now published and we have a few options down here that we can use to control what different things people can change or view um, or we can change the base map again. Um, all I need to do now is share it with people so there's a few options here. Um, what we can do is we can have a, a link that you can share which you can copy you can take this piece of code and embed it into a, a website um, in an iframe or if you want to do something much more advanced you can export um, some code that you can then manipulate with JavaScript um, and I think once you've done that you, the world's your oyster because you can do all sorts of really quite phenomenal things with your visualization but I'm just gonna copy a link and share that with people. I hope you enjoyed my little adventure into CartoDB and found it useful. I'm sorry it went on a bit long, but as you can see, it's quite easy to get lost exploring data with such an easy to use tool. If you're interested in open data or passionate about Bath and Northeast Somerset, please pop on over to bathhack.org to find out more about what we do. Thanks for your time and I hope to see you at one of our events in the near future. Goodbye.